Anguttara Nikaya, The Numerical Discourses, Ekanipata, Book of the Ones, Suttas 394-574. to Apara Achara Sanghata Vagga, Another section on the snap of a finger. Sutta number 394. Bhikkhus. If the bhikkhu were to practice and attain the first jhana, even for only a snap of the finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the first jhana? Suttas 395 to 401. Bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to practice and attain the second jhana, even for only a snap of the finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the second jhana? Sutta number 396 Bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to practice and attain the third jhana, even for only a snap of the finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the third jhana? Sutta number 397 Bhikkhus if the bhikkhu were to practice and attain the fourth jhana even for only a snap of the finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the fourth jhana? Sutta number 398 Bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to practice and attain to the heart's release through metta, even for only a snap of the finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the heart's release through metta? Sutta number 399. Bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to practice and attain to the heart's release through karuna, universal compassion, even for only a snap of the finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the heart's release through karuna? Sutta number 400 
bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to practice and attain to the heart's release through mudita, altruistic joy, even for only a snap of the finger, then he is to be declared the bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the heart's release through mudita? Sutta number 401 Bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to practice and attain to the heart's release through upekkha, equanimity, even for only a snap of the finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the heart's release through upekkha? Suttas 402-405 Sutta number 402 Bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to practice even for only a snap of the finger, maintaining his mindfulness while fully attentive, carefully staying with the most pronounced bodily experience, striving ardently but without having any thoughts of longing or hatred towards the world, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the satipatthana throughout his life? Sutta number 403 Bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to practice even for only a snap of the finger, maintaining his mindfulness while fully attentive, carefully staying with whatever is the most pronounced feeling that is being experienced, mindful of it in all its transitions and states, striving ardently but without having any thoughts of longing or hatred towards the world, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the satipatthana throughout his life? Sutta number 404 Bhikkhus if the bhikkhu were to practice even for only a snap of the finger, maintaining his mindfulness while fully attentive and carefully staying with the most pronounced emotional state that is occurring within the citta, the heart, mindful of it in all its transitions and states, striving ardently but without having any thoughts of longing or hatred towards the world, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the satipatthana throughout his life? Sutta number 405 Bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to practice even for only a snap of the finger, maintaining his mindfulness while fully attentive and carefully staying with the most pronounced mental object or phenomena that he detects is occurring, 
mindful of it in all its transitions, striving ardently but without having any thoughts of longing or hatred towards the world, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the Satipatthana throughout his life? Suttas 406-409 to and bhikkhus, if only for a snap of the finger, the bhikkhu were to generate within himself the firmness of exertion, arousing the zeal in his heart, so that no unskillful activities or behaviors would even occur or arise in him. Then he is to be declared the bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the four right endeavors throughout his life? Sutta number 407 And bhikkhus, even if, for only a snap of the finger, the bhikkhu were to generate within himself the firmness of exertion, arousing the zeal in his heart, so to abandon and walk away from any and all unskillful activities or behaviors that may have arisen already. Then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the four right endeavors throughout his life? Sutta number 408 and bhikkhus, if even for only a snap of the finger the bhikkhu were to generate within himself the firmness of exertion, arousing the zeal to cultivate skillful and good qualities in the heart, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the four right endeavors throughout his life? Sutta 409 And bhikkhus, if even for only a snap of the finger, the bhikkhu were to generate within himself the firmness of exertion, arousing the zeal to continue cultivating the skillful and good qualities in his heart, so they may flourish and be maintained, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the four right endeavors throughout his life? Suttas 410-413 to Similarly, bhikkhus, even if for only a snap of the finger, the bhikkhu were to exert himself by genuinely working to build the foundation for spiritual success, by directing the sankhara for fervent desire, in order to support the deepening of his samadhi, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher, 
Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the four bases for spiritual success and psychic potency throughout his life? Sutta number 411 Also bhikkhus, even for only a snap of the finger, if the bhikkhu were to exert himself by genuinely working to build the foundation for spiritual success by directing the sankhara for persevering energy in order to support the deepening of his samadhi, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the four bases for spiritual success and psychic potency throughout his life. Sutta number 412 Also, bhikkhus, even if, for only a snap of the finger, the bhikkhu were to exert himself by genuinely working to build the foundation for spiritual success by directing the sankhara for intuitive awareness, in order to support the deepening of his samadhi, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the four bases for spiritual success and psychic potency throughout his life? Sutta 413 Also bhikkhus, even if for only a snap of the finger the bhikkhu were to exert himself by genuinely working to build the foundation for spiritual success, by directing the sankhara for examining and investigation, in order to support the deepening of his samadhi. Then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the four bases for spiritual success and psychic potency throughout his life? Suttas 414-423 to Also bhikkhus, even if for only a snap of the finger, the bhikkhu were to confidently begin cultivating the spiritual faculty of faith within his heart, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the five spiritual faculties throughout his life? Sutta 415 Also bhikkhus, even if for only a snap of the finger, the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of persevering energy within his heart, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. <laughs> 
And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the five spiritual faculties throughout his life? Sutta number 416 Also bhikkhus, even if for only a snap of the finger, the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of mindfulness within his heart, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the five spiritual faculties throughout his life? Sutta number 417 Also bhikkhus, even if for only a snap of the finger, the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of samadhi within his heart, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the five spiritual faculties throughout his life? Sutta number 418 Also bhikkhus, even if for only a snap of the finger, the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of discerning wisdom within his heart, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the five spiritual faculties throughout his life? Sutta number 419 Similarly, bhikkhus, by exerting himself further, even if for only a snap of the finger, the bhikkhu were to confidently begin cultivating the spiritual power of faith in his heart, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the five spiritual powers throughout his life? Sutta number 420 Similarly, bhikkhus, by exerting himself further, even if for only a snap of the finger, the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of persevering energy in his heart then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and the cultivation of the five spiritual powers throughout his life. Sutta number 421 Similarly, bhikkhus, by exerting himself further, even if for only a snap of the finger, the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of mindfulness in his heart, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, 
then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the five spiritual powers throughout his life sutta number 422 similarly bhikkhus by exerting himself further even if for only a snap of the finger the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of samadhi in his heart then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him and if this can be said about such a bhikkhu then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the five spiritual powers throughout his life sutta number 423 similarly bhikkhus by exerting himself further even if for only a snap of the finger the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of discerning wisdom in his heart then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him and if this can be said about such a bhikkhu then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the five spiritual powers throughout his life suttas 424 to 430 next bhikkhus even if for only a snap of the finger the bhikkhu diligently strives by cultivating the awakening factor of mindfulness within his heart then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him and if this can be said about such a bhikkhu then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the seven factors of awakening throughout his life sutta number 425 next bhikkhus even if for only a snap of the finger the bhikkhu diligently strives by cultivating the awakening factor of investigation of mental objects within his heart then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him and if this can be said about such a bhikkhu then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the seven factors of awakening throughout his life sutta number 426 next bhikkhus even if for only a snap of the finger the bhikkhu diligently strives by cultivating the awakening factor of persevering energy within his heart then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him and if this can be said about such a bhikkhu then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the seven factors of awakening throughout his life sutta 427 next bhikkhus even if for only a snap of the finger the bhikkhu diligently strives by cultivating the awakening factor of spiritual joy within his heart then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him 
And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu, who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the seven factors of awakening throughout his life? Sutta number 428 Next bhikkhus, even if for only a snap of the finger, the bhikkhu diligently strives by cultivating the awakening factor of tranquility within the heart, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the seven factors of awakening throughout his life? Sutta number 429 Next bhikkhus, even if for only a snap of the finger, the bhikkhu diligently strives by cultivating the awakening factor of samadhi within his heart, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and the cultivation of the seven factors of awakening throughout his life. Sutta number 430 Next, bhikkhus, even if for only a snap of the finger, the bhikkhu diligently strives by cultivating the awakening factor of equanimity within his heart, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and the cultivation of the seven factors of awakening throughout his life? Suttas 431 to 438 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu, even for only a snap of the finger, were to genuinely strive to cultivate right view within his heart, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the noble eightfold path throughout his life? Sutta 432 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu, even for only a snap of the finger, were to genuinely strive to cultivate right intentions within his heart, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the Noble Eightfold Path throughout his life? Sutta number 433 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu, even for only a snap of the finger, were to genuinely strive to cultivate right communication within his heart, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. <laughs>
and if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the Noble Eightfold Path throughout his life? Sutta 434 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu, even for only a snap of the finger, were to genuinely strive to cultivate right action within his heart, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the Noble Eightfold Path throughout his life? Sutta number 435 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu, even for only a snap of the finger, were to genuinely strive to cultivate right livelihood within his heart, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the Noble Eightfold Path throughout his life, Sutta number 436. Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu, even for only a snap of the finger, were to genuinely strive to cultivate right endeavor within his heart, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore, not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and the cultivation of the Noble Eightfold Path throughout his life? Sutta number 437 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu, even for only a snap of the finger, were to genuinely strive to cultivate right mindfulness within his heart, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the Noble Eightfold Path throughout his life? Sutta number 438 And bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu, even for only a snap of the finger, were to genuinely strive to cultivate right samadhi within his heart, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed into the practice and cultivation of the Noble Eightfold Path throughout his life? Suttas 439-446 to In the same manner, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu, even for only a snap of the finger, mindfully perceives forms internally, on seeing forms externally that are limited, beautiful or ugly, he is able to penetrate through by going beyond them, thus, while being aware that Yes, I do know and see. Then, he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, 
and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself to penetrate through wisdom throughout his life? Sutta number 440 Also bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu, even for only a snap of the finger, mindfully perceives forms internally, on seeing forms externally that are limitless, beautiful, or ugly, he is able to penetrate through by going beyond them, thus, while being aware that, yes, I do know and see. Then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself to penetrate through wisdom throughout his life? Sutta number 441 In the same manner, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu, even for only a snap of the finger, while not perceiving forms internally, on seeing forms externally, that are limited, beautiful, or ugly, he is able to penetrate through by going beyond them. Thus, while being aware that, yes, I do know and see, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself to penetrate through wisdom throughout his life? Sutta number 442 In the same manner, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu, even for only a snap of the finger, while not perceiving forms internally, on seeing forms externally that are limitless, beautiful, or ugly, he is able to penetrate through by going beyond them. Thus, while being aware that, yes, I do know and see, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu, who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself to penetrate through wisdom throughout his life? Sutta number 443 in the same manner, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu, even for only a snap of the finger, while not perceiving forms internally, on seeing forms externally that are blue, in blue color, with blue hue and blue tint, he is able to penetrate through by going beyond them. Thus, while being aware that, yes, I do know and see, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself to penetrate through wisdom throughout his life? Sutta number 444. In the same manner, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu, even for only a snap of the finger, while not perceiving forms internally, on seeing forms externally that are yellow, in yellow color, with yellow hue and yellow tint, he is able to penetrate through by going beyond them. Thus, while being aware that, yes, I do know and see, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, 
living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself to penetrate through wisdom throughout his life? Sutta number 445 In the same manner, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu, even for only a snap of the finger, while not perceiving forms internally, on seeing forms externally that are red, in red color, with red hue and red tint, he is able to penetrate through by going beyond them. Thus, while being aware that, yes, I do know and see, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself by penetrating through wisdom throughout his life? Sutta number 446 In the same manner, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu, even for only a snap of the finger, while not perceiving forms internally, on seeing forms externally that are white in white color, with white hue and white tint, he is able to penetrate through by going beyond them. Thus, while being aware that, yes, I do know and see, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself to penetrate through wisdom throughout his life? Suttas 447 to 454 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu, even for only the snap of the finger, while possessing form himself, is able to internally see and be aware of material forms, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself to penetrate through wisdom throughout his life? Sutta number 448 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu, even for only a snap of the finger, while not being able to internally see, yet he is aware of material forms externally. Then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself to penetrate through wisdom throughout his life? Sutta 449 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu, even for only a snap of the finger, is able to only see and be aware of the beautiful in things, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, 
then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself to penetrate through wisdom throughout his life sutta number 450 also bhikkhu if the bhikkhu by having completely transcended and gone beyond the confines of the physical world and of tangibility along with the disappearance of perceptions dealing with sensory reflexive contact and by no longer paying any attention to the multiplicity of unending perceptions instead even for only a snap of the finger is able to remain fully aware of how space is infinitely boundless and thus enter and dwell in the dimension of boundless infinity of space even if for that fraction of a second then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not be blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him and if this can be said about such a bhikkhu then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself to penetrate through wisdom throughout his life sutta number 451 and bhikkhus if the bhikkhu by having completely transcended the state of space being infinitely boundless and by experiencing and being fully aware of how consciousness is boundlessly infinite instead even for only a snap of the finger he is able to enter and remain fully aware of how consciousness is boundlessly infinite then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him and if this can be said about such a bhikkhu then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself to penetrate through wisdom throughout his life sutta number 452 furthermore bhikkhus if the bhikkhu by having completely transcended the state of consciousness being infinitely boundless and by experiencing and being fully aware of how there is nothing at all instead even for only a snap of the finger if he is able to enter and remain fully aware in nothingness then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him and if this can be said about such a bhikkhu then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself to penetrate through wisdom throughout his life sutta number 453 also bhikkhus if the bhikkhu by having completely transcended the state of nothingness even if for a mere fraction of a second he is able to enter and remain in neither perception nor non-perception then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him now if this can be said about such a bhikkhu then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself to penetrate through wisdom throughout his life sutta number 454 but especially bhikkhus if the bhikkhu by having completely transcended the state of neither perception nor non-perception even if for a mere fraction of a second he is able to enter and remain in the state of cessation of perceptions and feelings then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana 
living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not be blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself to penetrate through wisdom throughout his life? Suttas 455-464 Sutta number 455 In the same way, bhikkhus, even if for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu practices concentrating on the earth kasina by being enveloped in its ubiquitous nature, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta 456 In the same way, bhikkhus, even if for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu practices concentrating on the water kasina by being enveloped in its ubiquitous nature then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 457 In the same way, bhikkhus, even if for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu practices concentrating on the fire kasina by being enveloped in its ubiquitous nature, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 458 Furthermore, bhikkhus, even if for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu practices concentrating on the air kasina by being enveloped in its ubiquitous nature. Then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. Now if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 459 Also bhikkhus, even if for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu practices concentrating on the blue kasina by being enveloped in its ubiquitous nature, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 460 also, bhikkhus, even if for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu practices concentrating on the yellow kasina by being enveloped in its ubiquitous nature, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, 
living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not be blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. Now if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 461 In the same way, bhikkhus, even if for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu practices concentrating on the red kasina by being enveloped in its ubiquitous nature, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not be blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. Now if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 462 And bhikkhus, even if for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu practices concentrating on the white kasina by being enveloped in its ubiquitous nature. Then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not be blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 463 Also bhikkhus, even if, for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu practices concentrating on the space kasina by being enveloped in its ubiquitous nature, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not be blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 464 Furthermore, bhikkhus, even if, for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu practices concentrating on the consciousness kasina by being enveloped in its ubiquitous nature, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. Now if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Suttas 465-474 In the same manner, bhikkhus, even if for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu practices and develops within him the perception of the horrendous, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 466 In the same manner, bhikkhus, even if for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu who practices and develops within him the perception of death, he is then declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. 
thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him now if this can be said about such a bhikkhu then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life sutta 467 in the same manner bhikkhus even if for only the snap of a finger the bhikkhu practices and develops within him the perception of repulsiveness of food then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not be blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him and if this can be said about such a bhikkhu then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life sutta number 468 in the same manner bhikkhus even if for only the snap of a finger the bhikkhu practices and develops within him the perception of disenchantment towards all things belonging to the world then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him now if this can be said about such a bhikkhu then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 469 In the same manner, bhikkhus, even if for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu practices and develops within him the perception of impermanence. Then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him and if this can be said about such a bhikkhu then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life Sutta number 470. In the same manner, bhikkhus, even if for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu practices and develops within him the perception of suffering due to impermanence, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore, not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 471 In the same manner, bhikkhus, even if for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu practices and develops within him the perception of lack of any substantiality within suffering. Then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 472 In the same manner, bhikkhus, even if for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu practices and develops within him the perception of abandoning, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. Now if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu 
who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life. Sutta number 473 Also, bhikkhus, if even for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu practices and develops within him the perception of fading away and dispassion, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. Now if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 474 In the same manner, bhikkhus, if even for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu practices and develops within him the perception of cessation, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Suttas 475-484 to Similarly, bhikkhus, if even for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu cultivates the perception of impermanence within him, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. Now if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta 476 Similarly, bhikkhus, if even for only the snap of a finger the bhikkhu cultivates the perception of non-substantiality within him, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. Now if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 477 Similarly, bhikkhus, if even for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu cultivates the perception of death within him, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 478 Similarly bhikkhus, if even for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu cultivates within him the perception of seeing the disgusting nature of food. Then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not be blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 479 Similarly, bhikkhus, if even for only the snap of a finger, 
The bhikkhu cultivates within him the perception of not delighting in anything offered by the entirety of existence. Then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. Now if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 480 Also bhikkhus, if even for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu cultivates within him the perception of directly seeing the skeleton, despite what may appear on the surface then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta 481. Similarly, bhikkhus, if even for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu cultivates within him the perception of seeing the body as being no more than a worm-infested corpse, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 482 Similarly, bhikkhus, if even for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu cultivates within him the perception of seeing the body as being a corpse, that has turned black and blue, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 483 Similarly, bhikkhus, if even for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu cultivates within him the perception of seeing the body as being a corpse that has been split open, exposing whatever was hidden inside then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. Now if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta 484 Similarly, bhikkhus, if even for only the snap of a finger, the bhikkhu cultivates within him the perception of seeing the body as being an unidentifiable bloated corpse, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. Now if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Suttas 485-494 to 494. And if bhikkhus, the bhikkhu, were to cultivate within himself, the recollection of the Buddha, even for only the snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, 
he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 486 And if bhikkhus, the bhikkhu were to cultivate within himself the recollection of the Dhamma, even for only the snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta 487 And if bhikkhus, the bhikkhu were to cultivate within himself the recollection of the noble sangha, even for only the snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta 488 And if bhikkhus, the bhikkhu were to cultivate within himself the recollection of virtuous behavior, even for only the snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 489 And if bhikkhus, the bhikkhu, were to cultivate within himself the recollection of open-handed generosity, even for only the snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life. Sutta number 490 And if bhikkhus, the bhikkhu were to cultivate within himself the recollection of the devas, even for only the snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 491 and if bhikkhus, the bhikkhu were to exert himself by applying mindfulness of in-and-out breathing, even for only the snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 492 And if bhikkhus, the bhikkhu were to cultivate within himself the recollection of death, 
even for only the snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 493 And if bhikkhus, the bhikkhu were to exert himself by directly anchoring his mindfulness upon the body, even for only the snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 494 And if bhikkhus, the bhikkhu, were to cultivate within himself the recollection of peace and serenity, even for only the snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Suttas 495-534 to 534. Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of faith with the support of the first jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta 496 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of persevering energy with the support of the first jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 497 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of mindfulness with the support of the first jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 498 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of samadhi with the support of the first jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, 
living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta 499 Also bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of discerning wisdom with the support of the first jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta 500. Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of faith with the support of the first jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore, not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 501 Also bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of persevering energy with the support of the first jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 502 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of mindfulness with the support of the first jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 503. Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of samadhi with the support of the first jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 504 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of discerning wisdom with the support of the first jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life.
Sutta number 505. Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of faith with the support of the second jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 506 Also bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of persevering energy with the support of the second jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 507 Also, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of mindfulness with the support of the second jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 508 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of samadhi with the support of the second jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it? throughout his life. Sutta number 509 Also, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of discerning wisdom with the support of the second jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 510 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of faith with the support of the second jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 511 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of persevering energy with the support of the second jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, 
then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 512 Bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of mindfulness with the support of the second jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 513 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of samadhi with the support of the second jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta 514. And bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of discerning wisdom with the support of the second jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore, not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 515 Also bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of faith with the support of the third jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not be blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life. Sutta 516 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of persevering energy with the support of the third jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 517 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of mindfulness with the support of the third jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore 
not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 518 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of samadhi with the support of the third jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 519 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of discerning wisdom with the support of the third jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not be blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 520 Also bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of faith with the support of the third jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not be blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 521 And, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of persevering energy with the support of the third jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not be blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 522 Again, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of mindfulness with the support of the third jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 523 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of samadhi with the support of the third jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not be blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? 
Sutta number 524. Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of discerning wisdom with the support of the third jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 525 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of faith with the support of the fourth jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 526 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of persevering energy with the support of the fourth jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life. Sutta number 527 Also, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of mindfulness with the support of the fourth jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 528 And bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of samadhi with the support of the fourth jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu, who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 529 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of discerning wisdom with the support of the fourth jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 530 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of faith 
with the support of the fourth jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu, who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 531 And bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of persevering energy with the support of the fourth jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 532 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of mindfulness with the support of the fourth jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 533 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of samadhi with the support of the fourth jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu, who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 534 And bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of discerning wisdom with the support of the fourth jhana, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Suttas 535 to 574 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of faith, with the support of metta, universal loving-kindness, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 536 Also, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of persevering energy with the support of metta, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, 
living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not blameworthy in consuming all that he is offered. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta 537 And, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of mindfulness with the support of metta, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 538 Again, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of samadhi with the support of metta, even for just the snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 539 And bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of discerning wisdom with the support of metta, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta 540 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of faith with the support of mitta, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain the jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta 541 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of persevering energy with the support of metta, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 542 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of mindfulness with the support of metta, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, 
then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 543 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of samadhi with the support of metta, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public. And therefore, not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 544. Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of discerning wisdom with the support of metta, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore, not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 545 Again, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of faith with the support of karuna, compassion, even for just a snap of a finger. Then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life. Sutta 546 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of persevering energy with the support of karuna, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 547 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of mindfulness with the support of karuna, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 548 And, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of samadhi with the support of karuna, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 549 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of discerning wisdom with the support of karuna, even for just a snap of a finger, 
then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 550 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of faith with the support of karuna, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 551 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of persevering energy with the support of karuna, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 552 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of mindfulness with the support of karuna, even for just the snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 553 Again, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of samadhi with the support of karuna, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 554 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of discerning wisdom with the support of karuna, even for just the snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta 555 Again, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of faith with the support of mudita, spiritual, altruistic joy, even for just the snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. 
Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 556. Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of persevering energy, with the support of mudita, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 557. Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of mindfulness with the support of mudita, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 558. Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of samadhi with the support of mudita, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 559. Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of discerning wisdom with the support of buddhita, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 560 Again, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of faith with the support of mudita, even for just a snap of a finger. Then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta 561 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of persevering energy with the support of mudita, even for just the snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life?
Sutta number 562. Again, bhikkhus. If the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of mindfulness with the support of mudita, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 563 And bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of samadhi with the support of mudita, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 564 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of discerning wisdom with the support of mudita, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 565 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of faith with the support of upekha, equanimity, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta 566 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of persevering energy with the support of upekha, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta 567 Again, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of mindfulness with the support of upekha, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus, he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 568 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of samadhi with the support of upekha, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. 
Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 569 Again, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual faculty of discerning wisdom with the support of upekha, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 570. Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of faith with the support of upekha, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 571 And again, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of persevering energy with the support of upekha, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 572 Again, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of mindfulness with the support of upekha, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 573 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of samadhi with the support of upekha, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. But if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life? Sutta number 574 Furthermore, bhikkhus, if the bhikkhu were to cultivate the spiritual power of discerning wisdom with the support of upekha, even for just a snap of a finger, then he is to be declared a bhikkhu who is able to attain to jhana, living and training according to the dispensation of the teacher. Thus he would be blamelessly partaking of the food offered to him by the public, and therefore not being blameworthy in consuming all that is offered to him. And if this can be said about such a bhikkhu, then how much more could be said about the bhikkhu who is fully dedicated and immersed in training himself in it throughout his life.
Sado, Sado, Sado.